Imagine someone telling you that even the giant wind turbines, symbols of clean, renewable energies to low their very existence to the oil industry. Sounds shocking, right? Because in our minds, wind power is supposed to mean freedom from oil. Yet in Landman, Tommy delivers this exact truth with a calm but sharp edge. And the more you think about it, the harder it is to dismiss. To understand why Tommy's words hit so hard, let's step back and look at the world of Landman. The show dives deep into the heart of the modern energy battle where old traditions of oil rigs clash with the rising hope of renewables. Tommy, one of the main characters, isn't just another voice in the story. He's someone who has lived his entire life in the shadow of oil rigs, pipelines, and drilling contracts. His world has always been powered by oil. Now he finds himself in a time where everyone is talking about moving away from it. When he speaks in episode 3. It's not random, it's a response born out of survival. He sees people rushing to celebrate wind turbines, solar panels, and green futures. But Tommy knows what it really takes to build those shiny towers of progress. He's not just defending oil for the sake of pride. He's reminding everyone that even the so-called clean alternatives are not as independent as they appear. This is where the tension begins. Because on one side, you have the promise of wind and solar energy. On the other side, you have men like Tommy who have spent their lives pulling power out of the ground, only to now be told that their way of life is dying. His words, then, are more than an argument, they're a challenge. A challenge to the audience, to the characters around him, and even to the idea of what clean energy really means. The moment arrives quietly in episode three, but the weight of it lands like a punch. Tommy is in a conversation that starts simple, but you can sense the friction building underneath. The topic turns to wind power, something that's often praised as the ultimate solution for a cleaner future. And that's when Tommy delivers his line. His voice is steady, almost casual. But his words carry the kind of certainty that only comes from years of experience. He explains that even wind turbines, those massive machines turning in open fields, are not free from oil. At first, it almost sounds like he's joking. After all, when we look at turbines, we see giant blades cutting through the air, powered by nothing more than the wind itself. But Tommy doesn't laugh. He doubles down. He points out that oil is involved in every step of the process, making the steel, transporting the parts. And even in the lubricants that keep the blades spinning smoothly once they're up and running. The other characters in the scene don't interrupt him. They know this isn't just small talk. The silence around his words makes them hit harder, like the room itself is forced to stop and think. And in that moment, Tommy shifts the energy of the conversation. What could have been a light debate about green energy turns into something more complicated, something more real. What's powerful about this scene isn't just the facts Tommy throws out, it's the way he delivers them. He isn't shouting. He isn't trying to humiliate anyone. Instead, he speaks with the kind of confidence that makes you realize he's not guessing. He knows. And because he knows, the audience is left with no choice but to lean in and listen. This scene may feel small, but it sets the tone for something much bigger. It reveals Tommy's role in the story not just as an oil man, but as someone who refuses to let the energy conversation be one-sided. He's not against change, but he's not ready to let the world pretend that oil has already been replaced. And that's why this moment matters. Tommy's argument cuts deeper than just a passing comment. He's not saying wind power doesn't work. He's not mocking the idea of renewable energy. What he's doing is pulling back the curtain, showing that even the symbols of progress are still tied to the very industry people think they're escaping. When he talks about wind turbines, he's not only pointing out the obvious fact that they stand tall in the middle of fields, spinning clean energy into the grid. He goes further, breaking it down in a way most people never stop to consider. To build a turbine, you need steel tons of it. And producing steel? That requires massive amounts of energy, most of which still comes from fossil fuels. You also need fiberglass for the blades, resins for the construction, and petroleum-based products woven into every piece of the process. Without oil, these materials don't even exist. Then, he touches on transportation. A single wind turbine can stand over 300 feet tall, with blades longer than the wings of a Boeing 747, 
moving those parts from the factory to the installation. Site takes enormous trucks, ships, and cranes. And all of those machines run on diesel, not wind. The irony stings. Even the journey to build a clean energy source leaves behind a trail of oil consumption. But Tommy doesn't stop there. He makes the point that even after the turbines are planted in the ground and spinning in the air, they're not completely oil-free. Every turbine needs maintenance. And inside those giant towers are gears and bearings that require lubricants, once again, products that come from oil. So while the energy coming out might be green, the machine itself has oil running through its veins. This is Tommy's genius. He takes something everyone thinks they understand. Wind Turbine Ann shows that it's not as independent as it looks. He's not lying. He's not exaggerating. He's simply pointing out the connections that most people ignore. And that's why his words stick. For Tommy, this isn't just an argument about energy. It's a statement about truth. The world wants to believe that it can cut oil out of the picture completely. But Tommy reminds us that the picture is bigger, more complicated, and not so easy to clean up. His argument isn't meant to destroy the dream of renewables it. It's meant to show that the dream still rests on the shoulders of oil. Whether people admit it or not, the reason Tommy's words strike such a nerve is simple. They go against what people want to believe. Wind turbines have become symbols of progress, hope, and escape from the messy world of fossil fuels. They stand tall on wide open landscapes, blades slicing the air like a promise of something cleaner, something better. For many, they represent freedom from oil. So when Tommy calmly says that even these monuments of renewable energy are tied to oil, it feels like someone popping a balloon with a single pin. It hits hard because it forces a kind of uncomfortable reflection. Most people don't think about the hidden steps behind energy. They see the clean final product and stop there. Wind turbines spinning? That must mean free, clean power. Solar panels glowing under the sun. That must mean the end of oil. Tommy doesn't let anyone rest in that comfort. He reminds us that the world is more connected and more dependent than the slogans make it seem. In the context of the show, this moment lands even harder because of who Tommy is. He isn't a politician spinning facts. He isn't a scientist presenting a lecture. He's a man who has lived through oil booms and busts, someone who knows the business from the ground up. That gives his words a weight that feels less like an argument and more like lived truth. You can almost feel the years behind his voice. The experience that makes his statement impossible to brush off. For the audience, it's unsettling. We want to root for progress, for clean energy, for a future that feels pure. But Tommy drags us back to reality. He doesn't do it with anger. He doesn't do it with arrogance. He does it with calm certainty. And that calmness is what makes it powerful. If he were shouting, it could be dismissed as defensiveness. If he were bitter, it could be brushed off as jealousy. But he's neither. He's steady. And steady truths tend to cut the deepest. That's why this scene lingers in the mind after it's over. It's not just a debate about energy. It's about belief versus reality. On one side, there's the vision of a world free from oil. On the other, there's the hard truth that oil still lies in the shadows of even the brightest future. Tommy's words strike because they remind us that the path to clean energy isn't a clean break. It's a complicated web and oil is still tangled in it. Tommy's words in this scene aren't just about turbines and oil. On the surface, yes, he's making a practical point about how energy systems are connected. But underneath, his argument carries a deeper meaning one that reflects not just on the energy industry, but on human nature itself. Think of it this way. The wind turbine in Landman isn't just a machine. It's a symbol of change, of the world trying to move forward into a new age of clean energy. When Tommy reminds us that oil is still hidden inside that symbol, it becomes a metaphor for how the past never fully lets go of the future. Progress, no matter how shiny or new, still built on the bones of what came before. For Tommy, the symbolism runs even deeper. He is, in many ways, like the oil industry itself, still strong, still powerful, but constantly being told his time is over. By pointing out oil's role in wind energy, he's also making a statement about himself. You can't erase me that easily. It's not just about turbines needing lubricants. 
It's about Tommy showing that he and everything he represents still matters in a world that's trying to move past him. This is what makes the scene resonate beyond simple dialogue. It's layered. On one level, it's factual. On another, it's personal. And on the deepest level, it's symbolic of the bigger struggle between tradition and innovation. The oil rig against the turbine. The old world against the new. But Tommy refuses to be painted as irrelevant. His words are his way of carving out a space in that new world. A reminder that even progress owes a debt to the past. And here's where it becomes even more interesting. Eh? The audience might not even realize they're feeling the weight of that symbolism as they watch. But it's there. The writers have built the scene so that Tommy's argument works both ways. It teaches us something practical about energy, and at the same time, it shapes Tommy into something larger than life, a voice for the old guard. It's refusing to vanish quietly. This is why the moment matters so much. It isn't just about oil and wind. It's about identity, survival, and the way the past clings to the present. Tommy becomes more than just a character in an energy debate. He becomes a symbol of the entire struggle between what we want the world to be and what the world still is. Tommy's words don't just work inside the story of Landman. They echo the real world we live in right now. Because if you take a closer look at how renewable energy is built and maintained, you'll see that his claim isn't fiction, it's fact. Wind turbines and solar panels are powerful tools for a cleaner future. But the journey to create them is still tied to the oil industry in ways most people never stop to think about. Take wind turbines. For example, to build just one, you need an enormous amount of steel and concrete. Both of these materials require massive amounts of energy to produce. And in today's world, that energy still largely comes from fossil fuels. The blades themselves are usually made from fiberglass and resins products that trace back to petroleum. Without oil, the raw materials for turbines would be far more expensive, and in some cases, nearly impossible to make at the scale we need. Then there's transportation. These blades can stretch longer than a football field. Moving them from factories to installation sites isn't as simple as loading them on a pickup truck. It requires heavy-duty shipping, trains, and specialized vehicles all powered by diesel. Even the giant cranes that lift turbines into place rely on oil to get the job done. And once the turbines are finally standing tall, they still need care. The gears and bearings inside each machine don't move on their own. They need lubricants, and those lubricants come straight from petroleum. It doesn't end with turbines, either. Solar panels, another cornerstone of renewable energy, also rely on processes that are still oil-dependent. From mining rare minerals to shipping components across oceans, oil quietly powers every step of their life cycle. It doesn't mean solar and wind aren't valuable. It just means the clean future still has a messy foundation. This is where Tommy's argument feels so sharp. He isn't trying to discredit renewable energy. He's pointing out the hidden truth we're not free from oil yet. The transition to clean energy isn't like flipping a switch, it's more like crossing a bridge. And that bridge is built with the very materials we're trying to leave behind. So when Tommy speaks, it's not just a dramatic line written for television. It's a reflection of reality. Even in a world racing toward green solutions, oil still lingers in the background, quietly powering the tools we use to build a better tomorrow. That's why the line hits harder the more you think about it. It's not just clever writing. It's the truth staring us in the face. What makes this scene so powerful is that it doesn't just explain something about. Energy yet explains something about Tommy himself. The way he presents his argument gives us a window into his mind, his values, and the way he sees the world. Tommy isn't the kind of man who wastes words. He doesn't talk just to fill silence. When he speaks, every sentence is calculated, sharp, and layered with meaning. His breakdown of wind turbines isn't just a clever rebuttal it shows his intelligence. He may not be sitting in a classroom with textbooks and charts, but he carries years of real-world knowledge that no lecture could replace. This gives him an authority that makes people listen. He's proof that lived experience can hold as much weight as any theory or plan for the future, at the same time. His words reveal a streak of survival instinct. Tommy isn't simply defending oil out of blind loyalty. He's defending it 
because it represents his life, his work, his identity. Every paycheck, every deal, every ounce of power he's built for himself is tied to oil. If oil dies, then so does the world he knows. By pointing out that even renewables depend on oil, he's really saying, I still matter. My world still matters. It's personal, even if he doesn't show it outright. There's also a quiet confidence in the way he delivers his point. He doesn't argue like a man desperate to be heard. He argues like someone who knows the truth and doesn't need to shout it. This confidence shapes how we see him not, just as an oil man, but as a strategist. He knows how to win arguments without raising his voice. He knows how to make people question themselves without insulting them. That kind of control makes him both respected and dangerous. Most importantly, this moment humanizes him. Without it, Tommy could easily come across as another stubborn oil executive refusing to face reality. But here we see the nuance. He's not blind to change. He's not denying that renewables have a place. What he's doing is pointing out the complexity that others want to ignore. That complexity is what makes him a layered character, someone who isn't easy to box in as hero or villain. So in the end, Tommy's argument about wind turbines isn't just a line of dialogue. It's a reflection of who he is. Sharp, strategic, confident, and deeply tied to the industry that built him. And the more you listen to him, the more you realize that he isn't fighting against the future just to fight. He's fighting to keep himself and his world, relevant in a time that seems ready to move on without him. Every good drama has moments that feel real. Moments that stick with the audience long after the credits roll. Tommy's wind turbine argument is one of those. The writers could have easily skipped over it, letting the story focus only on oil rigs, family conflicts, and business deals. But instead, they chose to plant this scene in episode three and. That choice wasn't accidental. At its core, scene is about balance. Without it, Landman could risk feeling one-sided, painting oil as the villain and renewables as the hero. That might make for easy storytelling, but it wouldn't feel true. By giving Tommy this argument, the writers make the energy debate more layered, more complex, and more authentic. They remind us that the world isn't divided into clean lines of good and bad. It's messy, tangled, and full of inconvenient truths. This also serves another purpose. It deepens the conflict. A show like Landman thrives on tension, not just between characters, but between ideas. The idea of oil versus renewables isn't just a background theme, it's the heartbeat of the story. By letting Tommy voice the argument that renewables still rely on oil, the writers turn that theme into dialogue, making it feel alive and immediate. It's not just theory, it's confrontation, but perhaps the most important reason this scene exists is character development. For Tommy, this moment establishes credibility. It shows that he's not simply clinging to oil out of stubborn pride. He knows the facts. He can argue his position with logic, not just emotion. This prevents him from becoming a flat character and instead turns him into someone the audience has to respect Evan if they don't agree with. Him. The writers also know their audience. Viewers of Landman aren't just there for drama. They're curious about the energy debate that drives the story. By weaving real-world truths into Tommy's dialogue, the writers give the audience something to think about. They want you to pause, to question, to realize that the energy conversation is more complicated than headlines make it seem. It's clever writing, because it entertains and educates at the same time. So when we ask why the writers included this scene, the answer is simple. They wanted to make Landman real. They wanted to show that this story isn't just about oil towns and personal struggles. It's about the bigger question of how the world runs and who gets to control that power. Tommy's words may be written, but they echo with the kind of truth that keeps viewers hooked.